Hello everyone, this is a quick unscripted video that I wanted to go ahead and put out there because over the past few days, there have been some very interesting things that have come to light in terms of Office 365 forensics. So CrowdStrike published this particular blog article called Hiding in Plain Sight Using the Office 365 Activities API to Investigate Business Email Compromises. I'll include a link to this in the video's description but basically, this steps through an undocumented API that has been discovered that provides access to things that we were told didn't exist. Now, what I mean by that is that if you look at the Office 365 plans, you'll notice that we have Pro Plus, Enterprise E1, Enterprise E3, Enterprise E5. As we step up to the higher tiers, we get some more advanced security capabilities. But even with those advanced security capabilities, you had to enable auditing on accounts to be able to get in-depth forensic information. And even so, you were limited in many cases to exactly what you should get. But in this case, we can actually go back six months in history for every single account in our Office 365 tenant and obtain some very, very detailed information. And when I say detailed information, I mean things like search terms, login events, IP addresses from which the activity occurred, just tons and tons of information here. And it doesn't have to be explicitly enabled for any given account. It's already enabled. In fact, all of this data is being collected in the background and there's nothing that a user has to do. So this has huge implications for cases of business email compromise. An article was published from... Uh, LMG Security uh, by Sherry Davidoff, who you may recognize as the author or co-author of Network Forensics, which is an excellent book, by the way. This article goes into some additional details and actually introduces a tool that accompanies the CrowdStrike tools that they've released. This tool is called Magic Unicorn, and it basically parses the logs that are obtained from the Microsoft API via the CrowdStrike tool and cleans them up and puts them into a tab-separated values format that's much easier to read than the format that it's currently in. And I'll actually show you that here in a minute. But I'll also include a link to this tool in the video's description. Magic Unicorn is actually also bundling a slightly modified version of the CrowdStrike tools within it uh, so they can work together and actually output this particular uh, version, which is much easier to read than what you get with a CrowdStrike tool alone. But suffice to say, this has major implications because of many cases involving business email compromise, which is a huge deal right now. It's cost billions and billions of dollars uh, in U.S. and outside of the U.S. as well in terms of businesses being, you know, having their email accounts compromised and wire transfers, unauthorized wire transfers being conducted. That's you know, some of which are transferring tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, or even millions of dollars uh, in these fraudulent transactions. So in those cases, or even in the case of a smaller business that didn't have some of the advanced security features because they were paying for a lower tier of Office 365, they may have thought that, hey, you know, we, we don't have the auditing turned on. And it's not retroactive if we go ahead and buy the higher tier Office 365 product. It's not like we can just say, uh-oh, something's happened. Let me buy the new tier of Office 365 product that gets me the information I need. That's great, but it's not retroactive, so I don't have the logs. In those cases, they've had to do something called assume breach. They cannot rule out the possibility that an account that had sensitive information within it was accessed because they don't have that granular level of detail, so they have to assume breach. And of course, that causes reputational damage, of course, monetary damage. There's all kinds of implications involved in that. But had they had access to this tool, that may have saved them. Now, the other interesting thing is that apparently five of the top forensics firms have had access to this undocumented API for some time, somewhere between six months and a year, based on what I've read, uh, it's not identified exactly who those top five are, and I'm not going to speculate here, but you can take a guess. And <laughs> the problem is, 
well, hopefully you see the problem. If these people, if these organizations have access to this tool, but the rest of the forensic community does not, this is certainly an ethical dilemma. So uh, basically this article that you're looking at here goes through that ethical dilemma and highlights a bunch of interesting problems that have recently come to light. Now, this is the GitHub page for the CrowdStrike tool, which again is bundled in the version of Magic Unicorn that we're going to be using. But you'll see that there is an activities.py script and a retriever.py script. And the usage is very, very simple. We basically specify a user account, the output file name, the type of message that, or the type of thing that we want to extract from Office 365, which is optional. By default, it'll just extract everything it can. And then also optionally, we can specify a start and end time period if we want to bookend that particular search of activity. If we leave it blank, it's going to go back six months. And when we tested it today in an Office 365 tenant with my team, it actually did go back almost exactly six months, 180 days uh, from today which I believe was somewhere around December the 29th. So again, very, very interesting. Now this is the Magic Unicorn tool, which again bundles the CrowdStrike Retriever scripts, as you can see here. And this is a slightly modified version of those scripts that's designed to work with the Magic Unicorn tool. So next, what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at this but even more interesting is we're not going to take a look at it with an Office 365 tenant simply because I haven't had a chance to set up a separate tenant to test this with. Rather, we're going to test it with an Outlook.com account that I've just recently created. My colleague Mike Peterson from nullsec.us, who has been in several other videos that I've uh, done, including the Introduction to Hashcat and the upcoming Introduction to Hashcat Part 2 videos, has found that this does work at least in some capacity with Outlook.com accounts, uh, which is also, again, very, very interesting. So what I've done is I've created a test 13 cubed at Outlook.com account, which by the time this video airs will be deleted. So uh, the access token that you see will not be redacted, nor will any of the other information associated with the account. Uh, but again, sorry, the account will be deleted and you can't do anything with it. But what we're going to do is use that and take a look at the data that the script is able to return. And I think you'll be pretty surprised. So let's take a look. Okay, the first thing we need to do is go ahead and clone this repo for the Magic Unicorn tool. I'll copy the URL, and then we'll switch over to our Linux VM, and we'll go ahead and do a git clone, and then we'll paste in that URL. Now, once this has finished downloading, we'll go ahead and change into the directory and then into the CrowdStrike subdirectory. Now, underneath the CrowdStrike subdirectory, we're actually going to take a look at the retriever.py script and the options available. We're going to use dash dash user and specify the test 13 cubed at outlook.com account that I've created, dash dash output to specify the output file name on the desktop here, and then the actual token. Now to get the OAuth token, we're actually going to switch back to our host machine, and we're going to go to this website, which I'll include a link to in the description. We're going to click Authorize Using Your Own Account, and we'll type in the credentials. And again, this is an OAuth sandbox website that Microsoft provides for testing. So I'm typing the credentials in, and now we are back. You can see that we have a 302 found response. I'm now going to click Get Tokens, and it is the access token that we're going to grab. So let's copy that access token, and then we will go back over to the Linux box and paste in this extremely long token and boom, successfully retrieved 239 activities. So this appears to have worked. But now let's clean up the output and generate those TSV files using the Magic Unicorn tool. And you can see here the options are pretty straightforward. The 
input file is with dash i, so let's specify the test file. Then dash t for the title, I'll just call it my report. And then dash o for the output. And this time we'll just call it magic test. And this will only take a second to run. You can see it already says completed. And at this point, let's go back up and look within the desktop directory. And you can see that we have these TSV files that have been created. Now, this is not an Office 365 tenant, as I said. This is just an Outlook.com account, so not all of the data will be populated, but of particular interest will be this file, which contains search activity. I'll go ahead and choose tab, which is already selected. And you can see here, we do have numerous search terms. So these are terms that someone has typed into the search box within the Outlook portal. And in this case, those are all fake search terms that I've typed in that would be of particular interest in an investigation. We have plenty of other files here. Now these are not populated in every case in my Outlook.com testing. This one is login activity. You can see it's blank. In some cases, I actually have had activity here, but not always, which is interesting. So I don't know why some of these things are populated sometimes and not other times. Again, this is primarily designed to work with an Office 365 tenant, but I did not have time as of the recording of this video to create a separate tenant to use for testing. But it works exactly the same way as what I've just shown you. So if you have a test tenant, I would encourage you to go ahead and grab this tool and play around with it. See if you can get the same results that I got. And of course, you can also practice or test with an Outlook.com account as well. Your results may vary there. I just need to do some additional research on that front. So again, this was a very quick unscripted video. I'm actually traveling right now, so you'll notice the video and audio quality is not exactly where it normally is. Apologies for that. Uh, again, this was just something I felt like I needed to create a video for. If you are not familiar with this, then you should certainly go read that article, both of the articles I referenced actually, and familiarize yourself with this entire situation and with the tools available, because it certainly is very, very interesting and unprecedented. So I hope this video has been informative for you. Please continue to like, subscribe, and share as always. And also, if you enjoyed this, check out my Patreon for 13 Cubed at patreon.com slash 13 cubed if you would be interested in supporting the channel. I would be greatly appreciative of that. And until next time, take care.